Okay, so everybody, we're here. Um, this is uh, Callie called on Facebook. She was actually um, an eyewitness to the incident when Mike Brown got shot and just wants to tell us a little bit about that. It was actually right after he got shot. I had pulled up. My sister came out, told me that she heard shots. We came down here, saw him getting pulled into the truck. Darren Wilson, I think that's mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Saw him getting pulled into the truck. They whisked him off real fast, but um, mm -hmm. blocked all this off. It was like, I don't know, hundreds of police officers. Only three black ones. I remember that for a fact. I was on the phone with my daddy. Um, they kept pushing us back and back, pulling the, the tape back and whatnot, mm -hmm. telling us that if we don't get back, they can't do the investigation. I don't know how we were disrupting it because nobody was doing anything. But they brought dogs on us. They were sitting in our faces. I was actually sitting right over here by that light pole over there. And one of the police officers came up to me. It was a... I don't know if she was Latino, but she was short. And she came up to me with the uh, AR in her hand and was like, get back or I might have to use it. I'm on the phone with my dad. I was like, hold on, daddy. <laughs> I was like, you might want to use that motherfucker then. Right. Somebody, I think it was Mike Brown's dad that pulled the tape down. He was really upset. Mm -hmm. well, I... Really, he was distraught. Right. They were trying to get in the street to see him. They wouldn't let him see him. Uh, he pulled the tape down and she was trying to pick it back up. She told me to move back and I was like, I'm not moving nowhere. Right. I didn't even disrupt what the fuck you're doing. Do right. what you gotta do. Right. And she was like, okay, well, uh, can you step back then? I was like, yeah, you might want to say that nicely. Right. She tied the tape back up. She was mad, I guess, or whatever. Mike Brown's mom came around and said that she was going to beat her ass. I was, <laughs> I was laughing so hard. She ran to the other side of the street after she said that. She just kind of backed up and mm -hmm. came over here. Me and my friends, my boyfriend and my sister were sitting there just, just waiting to see what was happening. It was about four hours before they actually did anything. Yeah, they blocked his body off with little, uh, I guess, markers or mm -hmm. blockers or something. Mm -hmm. They blocked that off and we came over here because I guess somebody was about to fight one of the police officers. We didn't want to feel like they were alone. Right, so right. So they came over here and they brought more dogs. Uh, I think it was about 12 dogs by that time. They brought some dogs on people over here. It was just ridiculousness. They were doing a little too much for what had actually happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They probably should have, I don't know, calmed down the situation by actually trying to help the people. Exactly. Escalating it. Yeah, right. They, that's what they did. And then they kept walking up towards us with the dogs. Like, I'll let this motherfucker go. Let it go. Man. Right. Please, let it go. I mean, you done already killed somebody, so exactly. fear is not going to motivate us no more. <laughs> like, right. With the dog in my face, what's right. that going to do? Right. So. Right. It was just a ridiculous situation. I was, I wasn't distraught, but my mom was. She definitely called me crying. Yeah. Hey, they shot the little boy. I know. I'm uh, at right, him. right, <laughs> right. He's in the street, but they put a sheet over him. That was about the best thing. Same, the best thing they did was put a sheet over him for four hours while they let his body yeah. lay there and then intimidated onlookers. Um, yeah. It seems like it was an escalation of the situation to try to yeah. cover up the fact that they were wrong, especially with a lot of video evidence coming out to confirm yes. the fact that Mike Brown did not actually attack the officer at all and that the officer was not called on scene right. for anything involving uh, what may um, or may not happen with Mike Brown at the liquor store. Um, I don't even think he could actually steal from that liquor store because I've been in that liquor store many, many a times. <laughs> and, um, they don't give you the pack of cigarillos until you give them the money. Um, that's so, usually how it works. Um, everywhere else, at first they said it was Quick Trip. That's how I know it was holding the story. At first they said it was at Quick Trip. That's why the Quick Trip got burned down. Mm -hmm. Everybody thought that the girl at Quick Trip had said something. When mm -hmm. she said nothing happened there, they then released a video about them being at Ferguson Market. Mm. Well, why would you say it was at Quick Trip originally? Right. There's just a whole lot of holes in the story. Yeah. Like, you don't even know what to say. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And it was funny how they kept releasing stuff after they were getting proven wrong. It was like, okay, well, we'll release this. Oh, this is the police officer's name. But, um, yeah, this is what Mike did and why he was messing with them. Then when it was told that he didn't even he didn't even know about the situation that happened at Ferguson Market, it was like, okay, then why did you release that? Right. There was no point in it. Exactly. Like, he wasn't responding to a call. No. He was just an officer like, I'm going to shoot a nigga today. Basically. Right, and then just go on vacation, me. paid. <laughs> just bothering right. people for no reason. Right. And what the funniest part is, I've been harassed by plenty of the cops out here, and I was like, well, you know what? You you could do something, but I have lawyers. I'm not worried about that. Right. I and mean, usually after you say something that you know about the law, or ask them what's your badge number, they leave you alone. I mean, yeah, the knowledge is power. They don't want you to be informed. Mm -hmm. And as people mm -hmm. that are supposed to be, like, upholding the law, it's, like, intimidating to have citizens who know the law better than you. Uh, have you ridden up the street up there? 
Uh, I just I, we just drove past the um the burnt down quick stop to come quick okay. trip to come here. It's quick stop okay. in in California. <laughs> yeah, quick stop at AM PM. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but up there, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Further up there, it's um police on pretty much every corner, and they it's like they monitor you. Hmm. They say there's just regulating traffic. It's like they monitor you. It's the same thing um like that to me. Well, in my opinion, like in the welfare offices and stuff, like y'all got hella police there to monitor us. But why do you need to monitor poor people who need help? I don't understand it. Who came to ask for help? Like it's a crime. I don't understand it. Right. They they're parked at pretty much every corner, and they'll just sit there in their police cars, mm. like not stopping anybody, just sitting there looking at you. Like why do you have to? Did I call you to be here? Right. Do you need something? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you guys, just wanted to, um, you know, let her tell her story about being out here because we get a lot of stories on uh, mainstream media um, that are basically sound bites that fit the narrative that they're trying to just, you know, get out there and not like effectively giving a platform for people to, to express themselves and let everybody know what's actually happening in Ferguson. So, um, this is Callie Cold on Facebook. Uh, do you have like any contact information you want to people if, like if they have questions um, or anything like that? Just hit me up on Facebook. I'll be able to okay. find anything on there. On okay. Instagram, Callie underscore Cold. All right, Callie underscore Cold on Instagram. Um, that's another thing I'm doing. Like I got a lot of people who want to know what's going on and you know just across who watch my stuff and I'm like I'm not always going to be here but if I can get people's information who are out here and on the ground and involved like at least we can keep real information coming through like legitimate facts right. you know what I mean about what's happening yeah I I basically well my boyfriend stays right around here so mm-hmm. in this building actually so okay. I'm over here all the time okay okay we just been down by the police station you know I'm <laughs> I was like, I'm trying to get out of here. Oh my god, they did seven arrests last night. It was like a hostage Just situation. Seven? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been a lot calmer than what I've been watching. Like, yeah, just seven because up over on West Florida, whoo, I know people was getting arrested. Calling me from here. Hey, Cal, you still outside? Nah. Um.